I just got back and I have myself a coffee and I thought I would come home because I'm very, very motivated this afternoon to plan out 2020 and then I thought I would share with you what it is I'm doing to feel a little bit more organized for 2020. I'm finally starting to make some decisions about where I want next year to go. When I moved here in October, I had no idea what I was going to do in 2020. It was absolutely blank, which was kind of really exciting, a little bit scary, but very exciting. And I did say that I didn't want to plan anything until January, but I couldn't help myself. I like to know what's going on in my life. I like to have a little bit of direction. So I made a few decisions over the last couple of weeks about what I'm going to be doing in 2020. And I am so excited. About a week and a half ago, I had a little bit of like a breakdown. I was just so overwhelmed. I had just a really, really upset day because I was like, there is so much to do. There is so much involved. I just... Yeah, just got really, really overwhelmed. Uh, but now that I have, you know, actually put things in motion, I'm feeling a lot better and I feel um, so much more prepared. To start off this video and to start off organizing and planning, I wanted to share a method that I like to use when I have no idea where to start, when I'm feeling completely lost and having no direction or plan for 2020. I felt completely out of control and I just was not having it last week. So when I feel like that, this is the method that I go to and I wanted to share that with you. So grab a notebook or, you know, a piece of paper, anything like that. Actually, you'll probably need multiple pieces of paper because with this notebook, I'm gonna be tearing out pages. I am categorizing my entire life. There is going to be a Canada category for all of the things that I need to put on a list to do for Canada. And then there's gonna be a YouTube category with all the things that I need to do for YouTube. I have a website one because yes, I launched my website and then I did nothing with it, which I'm so frustrated about. But obviously, as I said, I ended up burnt out and oh, it is so frustrating because there's this massive part of me that is so motivated. I want to keep creating and making videos. And then there's this other part of me that is flat exhausted and it's like I cannot do it. And it's the most frustrating thing ever because I'm like mentally getting back on track, but then there's this block and I don't, I don't know how to explain it. But anyway, so I, this is gonna help me hopefully get a bit more of a direction and start being able to be a little bit more productive. I'm gonna categorize my life and then I will share with you the types of categories that I have decided to create. I have a few categories already and I'm going to share some of them with you just to give you an idea of what it is that's sort of playing on my mind at the moment. I just think this method is so much better than trying to write one massive to-do list, especially when some of these things are not even going to be like able to be done until March. So um, categorizing like this just seems to make it easier when you break it down into multiple lists. So um, I'm gonna share with you some of my categories just so you can get an idea. But you know, like if you are renovating or you're buying a house, that's like, that's a, like a category. Or um, if you've got like business things that you're working on, you can break those down into different categories. Yeah, there's just so many different things that you can do and it's just easier to break it all down. So I have an Australian category which has you know just um, tying up loose ends like I need to cancel my gym membership from there and also just do some stuff with my storage locker and my furniture I also have a where is it like a Canada list so I've got Australia and Canada the Canada one I just need to do like some um, more document stuff for like visa things and researching different things to help get myself organized to be able to come back so that's that. The list was a little bit longer the other day, but I have uh, done some things like today, ticking things off. I have a digital category. So I have multiple emails and I just need to consolidate them. And I was actually thinking about this today. I'm going to be doing like a, a video about decluttering and organizing stuff digitally. And there's a few things on here that I will share with you in that video as well. But like also um, TV subscriptions and just subscriptions in general, which also kind of comes down under finance as well because I have a finance category, which means you know I have to start looking at organizing my tax because when I go back to Australia, I will need to do my tax as May is the time that everything is due. So I have to do that. I also need to yeah go through like my um, subscription accounts and just check my debits and stuff because there's money coming out and I don't like it and I just wanna be more in control and just run through some of my expenses too and see where I'm spending way too much. And then I have, a YouTube 
like account thing, which has some sort of like, you know, direction of where I want to take my channel, some ideas, things like that. So that's the digital one. I also have a work and emails one. This is just more applicable to sort of like brand deals, sponsorships, things that are in my emails that I really need to um, get on top of and have a clear vision of, especially in say, I would say like the next six weeks. So that's really important. And then I also have a personal list. And the personal list is just stuff that's like, you know, I've got to message certain friends, check in, organize plans. Uh, New Year's Eve, it's coming up. My friend Chelsea is coming to stay with me for a couple of weeks, which is going to be really exciting. So I'm not sure what the beginning of January would be like having her like stay with me. But anyway, this is just a start to my list. This is not a one time one day thing. I am going to be working on this list over the next couple of weeks. This is a starting point. I might write these up a lot neater in like maybe a digital form, like in the Todoist app or something so that I can create better lists. But I do just love starting with pen and paper and getting a messy copy. And I just think this is the best starting point. So if you're feeling really overwhelmed and you have no idea what's happening in 2020, just grab some sheets of paper and just start categorizing your life. And Sometimes these things only have one or two points on them, but there's still a category and they're still important to make. So I think this is the best place to start. I feel better knowing that I have this massive to-do list, but it's broken down into smaller to-do lists and it makes me feel better. So that's probably the first part of planning. The second part of planning is I now need to decide what sort of calendar diary system I'm going to be using for 2020. This is my favorite part of every year. I do plan to go uh, stationary shopping over the next week or so. Here in Canada, I know of like chapters, Indigo, Indigo chapters, whatever it is. If you have any other stationary suggestions or recommendations, please let me know because um, I'm after some cute stationery to get me more motivated for the new year. But I have been looking at some of their diaries and I'm gonna grab my laptop actually and I'll go through some of the stuff that I've been looking at. Okay, so I think I want a weekly um, planner thing. So I used to have a bullet journal before, but I don't think I'm feeling a bullet journal. I think I actually want a structured diary. So that's what I might might go with. And I've picked out a couple online. I haven't seen them in person yet because I just haven't had a chance to get in and go and see them. But I'll leave some of my favorites listed in the description, but um, I'll show you what I'm thinking of doing. Okay, so I'm on the um, Chapters Indigo website. Where are their agendas and planners? I have had a look already, just a couple. Um, there's like a really pretty green. I love green right now. One I'm looking at, let's find it. Oh, look, it's down here where I've already recently viewed it. And I just think this looks really cute. It's just such a nice color. It's got like gold detailing, 2020. And what I really liked about this is it's got like the monthly section. I'm very fussy with my diaries, but I like the monthly section. And then I also like this expenses or MySpace. It's a little bit blurry, so I can't really see what it is, but it just seems really nicely set out. And then the... No, no, not this one. Okay, so there was one I was looking at where it didn't have the full days. I don't like full day planners. That's too complicated. Okay, we're gonna not go with that one. Maybe it was this one that's like really pretty. I think it might have been this one. I do like the floral design on the front of this one. I think it's cute. Again, it has the monthly section and then there's also this planner bit which looks amazing and organized. And then this one, I actually really liked this. This is was like a weekly thing with your five days of like full sort of morning to evening really liked that and then Saturday Sunday off to the side and then a little random to-do list quite like this layout this was something I was thinking of so um, I might look at that I really need to go in person this is also a good way to start as well if you would like to get a new diary but you're not really sure how to go about it then coming online and just doing what I'm doing right now and having a look through because you can kind of get an idea that way you're not overwhelmed when you go into stores. I've come over to the Kiki K website because I love Kiki K and they do, I can get it shipped here, I think. So many cute diaries, so many stickers, and I don't know, I just, I love their stuff so much. I do wish I could go into a Kiki K store. That's the one thing I miss about home is being able to go into like Kiki K and Typo. I can't really see anything that I'm loving so far, although the planners are like the actual big planners are amazing. I have two of them. I have a lovely gray one and I also have a purple one, but they're both in Australia in my storage locker because I didn't think to bring them with me. So I think I'm going to avoid probably anything from Kiki K, but it's such a great place to go shopping for stationery and stuff. But yeah, I think I'm gonna go with something from uh, Chapters Indigo and their stuff is really, really cute. Like I've been into the one in the Eaton Center and it's so, so cute. So I think that's what I'll do next week. I will definitely film that um, and share with you all of the, the 2020 organizational stuff that I do purchase. But this is me just trying to 
plan it out and get myself some direction. Probably my favorite way to stay organized is notebooks. It is honestly an addiction. I have so many notebooks. I only have three here with me and it feels like it's not enough. I have a massive collection back in Melbourne, but they're actually all full. I usually like to have um, a couple of backups just in case. So uh, this one here is my backup. It's empty and I don't use it. I got this recently. This is from um, Chapters Indigo. Is there like a, do you say Chapters for short or Indigo for short? I mean, this just has Indigo written on the back of it. So maybe I could just say it's from Indigo. Um, let me know which one's the right way everyone says it but um, I will have these linked in the description as well and then I also have this one which is my current work one this is just one of my favorite ways to do things it's just filled with everything when I want to write a to-do list on a random Thursday I can write a to-do list I actually have a mind map in here just mind maps just bits of information business ideas sometimes I take notes when I'm watching uh, certain educational things um, I also just scribble and draw like there's some just drawings and stuff maybe when I'm on the phone and I just like to do this sort of thing it's it's just a place where I can just get a lot of my thoughts out and I really 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 enjoy it so this is just one of my favorite things and I'm a third of the way through this it does not take me long to fill these up because I write a lot this is also a place where I put video ideas and things that I need to talk about so that there's that and then I also have this notebook that I got at the airport on my way to China in September this is from design works Inc this has yellow pages I'm not really a uh, a big yellow page sort of person but I do like that it has these little monthly and day things at the top that you can circle and there's a subject line so this is my journal if you do not have a journal and you do not have to do it with pen and paper you can do it digitally with a word document but if you do not have a journal I would highly highly recommend this is something that you do in 2020 it is a diary with all of my thoughts and feelings inside and no one's going to see this so you just have to be honest and it is a nice way to get all of your thoughts out it's a way to help you maybe understand what it is that you're feeling and it's it's like a release and I do this in the mornings not every day uh, sometimes I might do it in the afternoon and I do it definitely when I'm feeling overwhelmed and I just sit down and I just let things flow and I write for as many pages as I feel like writing sometimes it could be a paragraph this big sometimes it could be five pages and it doesn't have to make sense it doesn't have to be coherent and it most certainly does not have to be neat and it's just such a great thing that I started doing over the last couple of months and this is almost full as well I don't know if I can link this one but I will try but that's my current uh, notebook situation and I love it I did rip out all of these pages what I use the notebooks for is exactly this just writing lists you could leave these lists inside the notebook but I decided to rip them out because I wanted to be able to lay them all out on the desk or the, the bench or whatever and have a big visual of all of my lists together that is the only reason and I ripped the pages out but essentially that's what these books are for just creating lists the last way that I like to plan things is the digital way which is Google Calendar Google Calendar is something I've been using for about a year now it's the first way I attempted digital planning and I love it so the reason I love it is because right now I can see my whole December it is all color-coded I can see exactly what's happening I will have um, a screenshot of my calendar here it stuff is blurred out so just be mindful of that I have to it's personal things you know um, but I can just see everything that's happening and it just it feels good and I feel organized and my favorite part about Google Calendar is that you know say I'm out for lunch with a friend and we decide we want to see a movie at 6 p.m. on Wednesday I can put it straight into my phone I don't have to worry about forgetting it and then I also don't have to carry around a big notebook and a diary I still love my diary that is why I want to go and get a new one as I talked about earlier in this video but I do love Google Calendar. I think I like it for the color coding system and just the, the full month representation so I can always see ahead and then I can work around whatever is already in my calendar and I don't double book myself. Plus it syncs to my laptop as well and I have it both ways and I just, I just find the color coding monthly visual extremely satisfying but I'd still also like printing out calendars. I haven't done that here because I don't have a printer, but I still like printing out calendars and putting them on my desk. But digitally, this is the best way. And I know I've talked about it before, but I wanted to include it because that's just one of the best ways to plan if 
maybe you're new to planning as well. So that's pretty much all of um, everything that I'm doing to organize myself for 2020. There are two weeks left of this year and I cannot believe it. And I will probably make a bit more of a formal organizational system for these lists, but I just wanted to share a method that I like using when things are really chaotic and I'm really overwhelmed and I don't know where to start. So I hope that this method helps you. I just think this is the best place to start by categorizing your life and writing lists. It's just a starting point. I hope that helps, you know, how to start planning for 2020, where to start planning for 2020. That's the best way. Uh, next week I will go and do a stationery shop and I'll take you with me and I'll share some of the things that I'm getting. Again, if you have any suggestions on where I could purchase things, that would be amazing. But uh, yeah, I feel more prepared for 2020. I feel like, as I said in the beginning of this video, the things are in motion. I have a direction, I have a plan, I have goals all happening and I'm really really excited I'm feeling good about next year let me know how you are tracking with your planning have you started are you going to wait till January what are your favorite organizational systems let me know because I love hearing about what everyone else does because it gives me more inspiration and yeah I think that's pretty much it so up the top of you can check out my last video down the bottom I will leave a link to another one of my videos and I will see you in the next one